What's up everyone? Welcome to part 5 of our Movidius tutorial series and in this one we're going to look at how the API works, how we can do things like connect to a device, load a graph, do inferences, things like that. And to do that we're going to be using a mobile SSD model as an example. So what you see here is that model running on my virtual machine and we're actually getting a lot better performance compared to the tiny YOLO model in the previous videos. So in this video, we're gonna go through all the steps to make the code that connects to the device, loads the graph, does the inferences, um, displays the boxes, and displays the video feed that you see here. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I wanna give a quick shout out to this website, pyimagesearch.com. And that's because we're going to be referring to a tutorial of theirs. The one I'm talking about is this real-time object detection on the Raspberry Pi. So this tutorial uses the same mobile SSD model we're going to be using. And they go everything from the very beginning to setting up your virtual machine, installing NCSDK, and then all the code that you need to generate this, um, this model here with the images and the bounding boxes and all that stuff. And if you guys haven't checked out this site already, you definitely should. I'll add a link in the description, but it's got tons of deep learning and machine learning tutorials, things like face detection, how to install um, OpenCV, and set up Ubuntu for the first time. So again, there'll be a link in the description for you guys to check it out. And one more shout out before we begin. This is the mobile SSD model we're going to be using. It's referred to in the Pi Image Search tutorial but here's the GitHub user, here's the repo. Go ahead and give it a star, check it out. It's a SSD model built on CAFE, but what we're gonna be using is the CAFE model and the proto.txt file. So we'll be compiling those into a graph, and then we'll also be referring to this demo.py file because it's got lots of useful information on how to interpret the inferences we get back from the graph. So with that all out of the way, Let's jump into the code. So now let's begin by cloning this repository and compiling the graph. So I've already copied the address. So what I'm gonna do is jump over to my virtual machine, pull open a terminal called git clone and paste in that address. So we'll run this, clone it right onto our home directory. So now what I'm gonna do is move into it. So it's called um, mobile net SSD and I'm just going to create a folder called graph just so we can compile the graph into it. So make sure you've got your NCS plugged in and so now what we're gonna do is compile the graph. So the command for this is gonna be MV capital NC compile and what we're gonna do is specify the proto.txt file. So it was called mobilenet.proto.txt now we're gonna specify the weight, so we do dash W, and that file is called mobile net SSD underscore deploy, and then cafe model. Next thing is gonna be, we specify the shaves or dash S, so we're gonna do 12. I'm not exactly sure what this actually means, but the maximum is 12, and the more you specify, the better the graph will perform. So it's always gonna be 12. Then we're going to do dash O to specify where we want the output to go. So we created that new folder called graph and we're just going to call it graph. So we'll just run this. It should compile and generate the graph. So if we CD into our graph folder and look inside, you can see we've got our graph right here. All right, now that we've got the graph compiled, what I want to do is walk through the steps on how to process a single image. So to do that, I've gone ahead and downloaded an image and this mobile SSD model is supposed to be able to detect cats. So I went ahead and downloaded an image of a cat. So in the mobile SSD directory, there's an image folder. I went ahead and downloaded this image of a cat. So to demonstrate, I'm gonna be using Jupyter. So I'll back out of here and just in the main directory, we'll call Jupyter notebook and we'll start a new notebook and go through all these steps all right like always we're going to begin with the imports so the way we import this api is from mvnc 
we're going to import MVNC API as MVNC. We're also going to need NumPy, so we'll import NumPy as MP. We'll also need OpenCV, so import CV2. And for plotting, we're going to go ahead and import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. So that'll do it for our imports. Next, I want to define a few constants. So the first one's going to be called graph, and this is just going to be the location of the graph we compiled. So from here, it was in that folder called graph, and the file was called graph. Oops, graph. Next is going to be image, and this is going to be the image of the cat. So it was in the images folder, and it was called cat.jpg. Next thing is going to be a list of all the objects we can detect. So it's called classes. And if we come over to the GitHub page and come to the demo.py file, and I'll zoom in a bit. And if we scroll down here, you'll see there's this thing called classes. So this is all the objects we can detect. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and just paste that right here. And let's tab that over to make it look pretty. And the last thing we're going to define is a thing called input size. So what this is, well, this model, we need to input an image of a specific size. So again, if we jump back over to this demo.py file, you'll see that in this pre-processing function, there's this um, function to resize the image. So when we load this image, we need to resize it to 300 by 300. So I'm just going to create this um, variable for it or this constant input size. So that's just going to be 300 by 300. So we'll run that and that'll do it for our constants. Now what I want to do is give a quick high level overview of the workflow in order to use an NCS. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to discover our device. And in order to discover it, what we're going to do is be creating this object called device. Next thing we're going to do is actually load the, our, well, load our graph onto the device. So once we do this, we'll have a new object called graph. Next thing we're going to do is, well, we have to do a little bit of image pre-processing. So this is going to be like rescaling the image so that it's, 300 by 300, so a little bit of image pre-processing. Then once we've done that, we're ready to do our prediction. So basically you're going to take your graph and we'll sort of uh, load the image to it and it's going to return, um, it's going to return a prediction. So once we've got our prediction, we need to do a little bit of post post processing. So this means taking our prediction and getting out the label, the class object, the uh, coordinates of the boxes, and then taking all that information and drawing the boxes onto the images and overlaying the labels and all that stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing. And it's not all that different from what we did with the YOLO series and with Mask RCNN. So you'll see a lot of similarities in the code. So now let's begin by discovering our device. So the way we do that is we'll create this object called devices, and that's going to be mvnc.enumerate devices. So this is going to return a list of all the devices. So if I just go ahead and run that, you'll see that there's one device connected. So that's our one stick. So now what we want to do is create an object called device, and that's going to be equal to mvnc.device. And what we're going to be um, passing in is our devices. And we're just going to take the first element in that list because there's really only one element. Now, if we run device, you'll see that it's this um, MVNC API device. So once we've done that, the next thing is to finally open the device. Yeah, so if we run this, 
we we have our device we've connected to it and it's open all right so the next step is going to be to load our graph onto our device so the way we do that is first we need to open our graph so we're going to use with open and we're going to pass the path to our graph which is just the um, this graph in all caps variable and we're going to open it as rb so we're just going to be reading it and it's going to be with open as and we're just going to call it f so the next thing we're going to do is create this object called graph file and that's going to be equal to f dot read so now we've read our graph the actual compiled graph that we generated earlier and then we're going to create an object called graph but in lowercase, and that's going to be equal to device, and it's going to be allocate graph, and what we're going to pass is the graph file, and looks like I've got a typo here. So now if I were to look at, man, I can't spell graph today. I look at this it's just this mvnc graph object all right next step is going to be the image pre-processing so again i'm going to jump over to the demo.py file and we're basically just going to copy this um, this whole thing here so we're going to create a function called preprocess. it's going to take in some image do a resize and actually um let's just do input size because that's what we defined right here 300 by 300 and we're going to subtract um, 127.5 and then actually this multiplication is the same as just dividing by 127.5 and then we're going to return the image but we actually need to do one more step so if we check out um, the pi image tutorial scroll down um, scroll down quite a bit because there's all this stuff about setting up the VM and once we get to the code you'll see that they have an extra step so there's this um, changing the object to float 16 so yeah this is some numpy array and we're just going to change the type to float 16 so let's jump back over here and what we'll do is right here we'll do as type mp dot float 16. cool and um oops and tab that over all right now that we've got that step done let's talk about how we're going to do our prediction so what we need to do first is open the image so i'm going to create this object called lowercase image it's going to be cv2 dot image uh, i am read and what we're going to pass is the, well, I called it all caps image. And why don't we just to start, take a look at this thing. So plt.mshow will do image and plt.show. So this is our cat, just our image as it is. No touch-ups, no processing, no nothing. So first thing we need to do is extract a little bit of information from our image. So what I'm gonna do is get something called the height and the width. I guess you can probably guess what this is, um, but we're just gonna do image.shape and we're just gonna take the first two elements of that list. So the first two elements are the height and width and this thing 720 by 720. So we've got our height and width Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to define something called H factor and um, W factor. So because we're going to be shrinking our image to 300 by 300 and then doing our prediction on that, we need to rescale our output. So I'm going to be creating these um, rescaling factors. So the H factor is going to be the height divided by the um, by the input size and it's going to be the first one then the w factor is going to be the width divided by the input size and we're going to take the second factor so let's go ahead and 
pre-process the image. So I'm going to create a new object called image um, pro or image processed. And we're just going to call our pre-process um, function. So just this function here, pre-process. And we're just going to pass our image. So now, well, we're ready to basically do what we say here. Load that image onto our graph and return our prediction. So the way we do that is we're going to call graph dot load tensor. So the way load tensor works, we pass an image. So we're going to pass the process image or image pro. And then the second um, argument is going to be none. Don't ask me what that is, but we need to pass a none. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get two things back. We're going to get the output and then something that we don't care about. So we'll use the underscore. And what we're going to do is call um, graph.get result. So our output is going to be all the information. So it's this big old list of everything. It's not, um, it's not a dictionary with labels. It's just like a big old long list. Actually, let me show you what the output looks like. So let's just call output. We'll run that. And yeah, like I said, it's just a list, a list of a bunch of, you know, numbers. So it's hard to really interpret what this is. So this is where we need to go to the Pi image um, tutorial to see how we can interpret this output. So I'm going to jump over to that Pi image search tutorial. And if I come to this part here, so you can see right after the graph.get results, um, there's this thing called uh, num valid boxes, and it's the first element in our output. So what this is, is the number of objects we detected. So if I jump back over to the, our file, you can see that the first element we get is a one. So that's the number of objects we detected. We detected one and it should be a cat. So I'm going to go ahead and create that, um, that thing here. So valid boxes is going to be equal to output zero. So now if I jump back over to the tutorial and scroll down a little bit, um, you'll see that there's this prediction list. So we're going to be filling this with all the prediction information. Then what we're going to do is loop over that valid boxes. So the first thing is they sort of redefine what box index is by shifting it by seven. So if you think about it, like if we pass a, um, a one here, the first item is just going to be a zero. So this box index is zero. We plug it into here. We're going to get seven. So base index is seven. So we're sort of like, oops, ignoring, um, like the first seven elements. And then we're picking up, um, on one of these, like probably this eight or something like that. So let's jump back over here and take a look. So we do this for loop and then this little if statement, it's just checking to see if we find any NANs. So in this list, you'll see these NANs are sort of spread out through it. And we're just checking for them. If we find any, we're basically just going to skip over that data and move on to the next one. We're actually not going to be using this right now. Um, just because our data is going to be valid. So for now, I won't add this, but we will when we write the final code. But moving on, so our pre-processed image, we're going to get the height and width, and then you can see that elements 3, 4, 5, and 6, this is going to be x1, y1, x2, y2, and then elements 1 and 2 are going to be the prediction class and the confidence factor. So this is basically all the information. So let's jump back over to our notebook. And the first thing I'm going to do is let's start with that for loop. So for, I'm just going to call it I in range. And instead of like redefining the variable after the for loop, I'm just going to define our range so it loops over correctly. So we're going to start at seven. And then we're going to, the total number of them is going to be seven times 
one plus the valid boxes. And then we're going to move in steps of seven. So that's how I'm going to do the for loop. And first thing I want to do is get the class information. So you'll see here, remember the first element is going to be the prediction class. So I just called it class and that's going to be classes and it will be the integer value of the output and it's going to be at i plus one so if i were to wait let's just print let's just print what cls is it should get cat and what did i do wrong Oops, so I made a mistake. So this output or this valid boxes, this needs to be an int, otherwise it's not gonna work with this range. So let's go ahead and make this an int. Oops, there we go. It's an int now, let's run it. We get a cat. So that's good. Next thing we wanna do is get the confidence value. So I called it conf and it's just gonna be our output and it'll be the next one in the list. So I plus two. So let's go ahead and print that out as well. See what our, what our confidence factor is. So yeah, that's good. We're getting a hundred percent confidence factor. So the next thing to do is to get the X one, Y one, X two, Y two coordinates. So I'm just going to come down here and we're going to do X one is equal to, and we're going to start by just doing the output and we're going to take the next one in the list. So X one is going to be I plus three. So that's going to be some like, um, value like zero to one, something like that, but we need to rescale it. And I know I mentioned these, but actually we, we don't need these. Um, it's kind of left over from the other code, but I'm going to go ahead and remove those. And this one, we're just going to multiply by the width. So we'll multiply by the original width. Um, and then what we're going to do, um, just because in the tutorial, what they do is they do this clipping. So they take the max value between zero and that box coordinate, just so the coordinate doesn't extend off the image. So we just do this clipping, um, you know, use max zero or min width and height, just to make sure our boxes stay on the frame. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So let's, well, the first thing I want to do is make this an integer because this is going to be a pixel value and we just want whole number or integer values for our pixel values. Then I'm going to wrap this whole thing in another parentheses, make this a max and we're going to take the max value between zero. So that's our X one. I'm just going to copy this whole thing. So um, this will be Y1, and this will be the same, but we just shift this by one and make this the height. So now I'll just copy both these, and this will be our X2, Y2. This will be min, and instead of zero, this will be width. And um, this will be height. And then we shift these also, so five and six. Cool, so that's our X1, Y1. So now what I wanna do is actually put the rectangle and the label onto our image. So a lot of this code will look familiar from the YOLO series, but let's define something called a label. And it's gonna be a string and it's gonna have two things. Um, the first one is gonna be like the actual class, so cat in our case. Next thing is gonna be the confidence factor. Uh, I'll put a semicolon here. So this will just be a string, and this one, I'm gonna format it just so it has no decimal places. So then we'll call format, and the first thing is gonna be the class, so that's gonna be like cat, and the next thing will be the confidence factor. And let's multiply by a hundred and put a little percent sign here just so we get a percentage. So that's our label. So now what I want to do is redefine our image. So our image is going to be 
our old image, but we're going to put a rectangle on it. So cv2.rectangle, we'll, we'll take the image and we'll add a rectangle to it. So the coordinates are going to be, the first one's going to be x1, y1. The next one's going to be x2, y2. And I screwed that up. So let's get these parentheses correct. Okay, so those are our coordinates. The next thing is going to be the color. So let's just do a green box. So 0, 255, 0. And the next thing is just going to be the box thickness. So we've got that. So now let's add the label. So image is going to be equal to cv2 dot put put text. So what we're going to put text onto is the image. Then we're going to, the text will be the label, the position of it. Let's just put it at um, X1, Y1, and let's just um, shift it by five just to move it up a little bit. Then let's specify the font. So cv2.font Hershey simplex the font weight will be one um, let's come to the new line the color will also make it um, green so 0 255 0 and then the last thing I think this is like font size or font weight but yeah that's it so that's pretty much it we've modified our image and all we need to do now is show it so I'm going to Let's go ahead and delete this. We'll come outside the for loop and we'll just do plt.mshow. Actually, we've already got it here, so I'm just going to uncomment it. Fingers crossed this works and let's run it. And hey, look at that. We've got our cat, we've got our box, the label. Yeah, it's a little not legible, but if I were to do something like, um, Let's just go ahead and add it here. I know normally we wouldn't, but matplotlib uh, notebook. So it's a little bigger and more readable. But yeah, that's it. You can see we've got it working. We've got the box like correctly positioned over our object, and we've got the right class name, and it's all working. It's all set up. All right, since this video is getting a bit long already, what I'm gonna do is cut it off here and in the next one, we'll pick back up and look at how to implement everything in the Python file to run in a loop and display using OpenCV. So like always, there'll be links in the description and if you liked the video, leave a like and if you really liked it, then hit the subscribe button. Peace.